Now, elder statesman Edwin Clark asked the North to allow the South to produce the next president. And Kiduna State Governor El Rafai seeks help as bandits run rampage in the state. And this is Plus Politics, and I am Justin Akadonye. Now, ahead of the 2023 general elections, elder statesman Edwin Clark has asked the North to allow the South to produce the next president in the country. Clark advised Northern politicians to reconsider their desire to contest the presidential election next year. He also warned that failure for a Southerner to emerge as president would lead to chaos and possible disintegration of the country. Now, this cousin with me is former advisor, special advisor to the River State Governor, Oponabo Inko Taria. We also will have the Director of Strategic Communications Coalition of Northern Groups, Samaila Mosa. We'll begin with uh, Oponabo in this particular discuss. Good evening to you, Oponabo. Many thanks for joining us on the show. Good evening. Good evening, Justin. You're welcome back. And good evening, dear. Thank you so much, Oponabo. Let's just dive right into it right now. You know, Elder Statesman seems to believe that uh, if we don't get, uh, produce uh, the, not, the South, that is, don't get to produce uh, the next person, uh, there might be uh, disintegration. Those were his words, and of course, chaos in the country. Why is it important that we have a Southern president come 2023? Yes, well, it is important that you have a southern president come 2023 when you consider or take on the advisement, the geopolitical zones, and also consider uh, the sensitive nature of our politics. You know, just like in the United States of America, which is the uh, NATO place of democracy, you understand that, yes, democracy is all about majoritarianity. But even at that, to address the numerical differences and balances in the system, they ideated the issue of uh, the college system, which is meant to address that. And the whole essence is to steal the fears of uh, the minority and uh, the fears of marginalization, segregation, and discrimination. Now, come back to Nigeria. Uh, the North has always said that it has to be based on majority rule. That is democracy, no doubt about that. But there are extenuating circumstances, especially when the tenuous leadership of the engagement we call Nigeria has been threatened. You must feel the pictures on the world. What steps are you to take? You have to address, because the issue of marginalization, discrimination, is what has uh, stimulated the various crisis we have in the country, the issue of uh, a lot of people believe that they have been discriminated against, and so they call for what we are now have uh, quasi-autonomy, so that their issues can be addressed, just like the South East So these are very sensitive issues, and that is why Edwin Clark, that if they are not handled uh, cautiously, they very soon it might uh, snowball into anarchy. That's the point Edwin Clark is making. And that is why he's saying, and one way you can say, because if you talk of the Southern president, President Goodluck Jonathan, of course, who was an accidental president, his presidency was a function of doctrine of necessity. He was an accidental president. And uh, because the Constitution so allows it. Now, when he was to go for a second step, that ambition was truncated. And it was truncated as a result of conspiracy. A lot of people believe that he was stealing the firm of the Northerners. And that was how they all rallied around to support a Northern president in the person of Muhammad Buhari. Now, Buhari has spent eight years, will be spending eight years come May 29, 2023. And if you add eight years, come May 29, 2020, to the two years of uh, late year at work, the, the North has spent 10 good years in office. 
And if you say another Nathana should be met, then you are because you have the numerical strength. That is irrefragable that they have the numerical strength. When you say another Nathana should be met, based on numerical strength, then you are saying the others will feel dissolution. They will believe because lupum acceptance is much more building than outside projection. You have already said to them that they are not part of Nigeria and they can never be. I am appealing. He said there will be a prescription for anarchy. I am actually appealing to other regions to allow the South to produce the next president, the South South or the South East. Because the South East too is also a victim of, of, of this marginalization we are talking about. So they should allow the South South to produce the next president from 2023. And it is only at that point you can sway, placate most Nigerians, if not 90% of Nigerians, and they will believe right. that they are part of this encasement we call Nigeria. So, Edwin Clark is right. But what, while, my, while I will debate a little, is that he said it will be a prescription for anarchy. It could be insidious. In other words, it could lead to it. But I will not want to breathe down on the neck of anybody, because okay. it is the person's constitutional right. I will appeal them to allow the South South produce the next president from 2023. All right, thank you, Punabo, for your opening salvo. Uh, let's uh, bring uh, Samai Lamosa into the conversation. He is the director of strategic communication uh, for the coalition of northern groups. Good evening to you, Samaila. Thanks for joining us on um, this particular discourse. Samaila, are you with us? All right, so let's uh, continue with Topunabo. Uh, hopefully, we'll uh, be able to get um, some highlights so he can also share his view uh, concerning the, this issue that we are looking at. Now, Topunabo, let's still talk about uh, you know, this insistence of um, the South uh, controlling you know, the hems of affairs that come 2023. Uh, when he said the South specifically, he was not really talking about either the South South or the Southwest or the South East. Uh, you know, going by the fact that we have um, ethnicity as one of our major challenges in the country, don't you think that another issue that w may arise would be uh, uh, who would be in the forefront? Should it be the Southwest or the Southeast or even the South South? I will advocate because the Southwest had two tests, eight years, and the of Olusha Gobasi, who handed over to Yaradba. The only tenor that was truncated was the other last tenor. And that's why I refer to uh, Jonathan's administration as accidental, as, uh, accidental. Now, having said this, we cannot go to the Southwest. We have a starving Southwest, uh, somebody from the Southwest as vice president of the federal government. And it cannot go back to the South. It should be between the South South and the South East. That's the truth about it. If we have to be as objective as we as, as ought to be, if we have the interest of Nigeria at and we believe that we should remain as one, then we should all, as, as much as we can, be as honest and as truthful as we can. Uh, it's either the Southwest, sorry, God, God forbid, it's either the South, I know Justin will laugh, it's either the Southeast or the South South, not the Southwest, not the North. All right, uh, let's still talk about um, this issue of um, ethnicity because uh, uh, Nigeria has actually been uh, described several times at different for as a country you know, that is blessed amongst uh, several ethnic groups. Now the talk is about you know, the South uh, East or the South South you know, controlling the machinery of government. You know, over time, don't you think uh, there will be some sort of um, more complaints from other regions, you know, who might also feel, you know, segregated or marginalized? Because, you know, we also have the issue of um, the North Central who somehow don't really would want to call themselves the core North. Uh, how do we uh, begin to address their own concerns? Well, um, I think the, um, the Northerners are deliberately trying to give slanted interpretations into the zoning system, uh, uh, trying to obfuscate issues. It is either north or south, east or west. The issue of north central, north east, and so on, is just a nonsensical argument, an inane argument. And that is because the north 
believe in this hegemony. They believe that it is their right. And they also believe that they have the numerical strength. And as a result of that, they can rule. You know what? Um, I don't want to judge on the Southern Pass or on Necessary Center. But if you remember a man from the North who said the Northern Pass shall rule forever. I know you. A good student of history. So, but let me not uh, lay my burden on the members of Nigeria so that we don't uh, open up fresh new old wounds. Having said this, we cannot talk of North, North Central, North East. I don't think that argument, I mean, some of us are accused of prison and poverty of blood. We should be talking about the North, the South, the East, and the West. That's what we should be talking about. Uh, anybody who breaks drums of this issue of North Central, not, uh, not, uh, not East, and so on, uh, will be sensitizing Nigerians to the actuality of the artificiality of one nation. And that will be highly omitted. All right, uh, um, Dex, um, Obunabo. Still, the octogenarian expressed disappointment over uh, moves that he has seen so far. He said that... Uh, I don't think we should dwell on that. And I don't think that should be the basis of North Central. Not just come out to play. Edwin Clark, shadow. Edwin Clark was shadow. That it should that happen, it's going to be a prescription for Anna. And that's why he's warning. It's, it's, it's for warning, Nigeria. That we must take into consideration the sensitive nature of our politics and the sensitive nature of uh, our, our, our nation. And that's why Edwin Black is advising. So I don't think we should come up with issue of not east, not west, not center. I don't think that is necessary. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. It's completely named and completely neutral and highly mischievous for anybody to talk of not central, not east. Is it that south, west, north, or east? It's as simple as that. Oh, very good point uh, you have mentioned. Uh, let's still talk about um, other issues um, that um, uh, the elder statesman um, raised. Uh, he expressed disappointment over moves by uh, Tuku and other northern uh, presidential aspirants uh, you know, to contest in 2023. Uh, he went on to say, despite uh, the resolution by the 17 Southern Governors uh, Forum, South and Middle Belt uh, Leaders Forum, groups and eminent northern leaders. But being that as it may, how come we're not seeing uh, much, uh, well, I say, uh, agitations, you know, or maybe pushing themselves forward. We've, we've not really seen much candidates that are coming out from the South, uh, you know, wanting to show or indicate their interest uh, for 2023. Well, we're not really seeing that right now. Well, um, I think that is as a result of um, uh, what I'll call the doctrine of big lords and big servants. A situation where uh, before you declare or make your intentions known, you must get a nod of the master. Mm. If your master, if you don't, if you don't do that, then uh, you are not loyal. You know there is a wide interpretation of loyalty in this part of the world. I can tell you that that in any civilized plan, you are loyal to the constitution, you are loyal to the federal republic, but in this part of the world, you are loyal to the and not to the constitution, not to the federal republic. So a lot of people who have interest to contest. Are waiting for the nod. If you're in the APC, you're waiting for presidential nod. If you're in the PDP, you're waiting to be a consensus candidate. So that is the problem, and that is the bane of our society. And that's why a lot of them, when they get into office, they become, uh, 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 how would I put it, subservient. And they try as much as they can to please their master. And after a year or two, there is this friction because they want to assert the authority. And you find out that the master and the servant is beginning to have a problem. So that is the bane of our politics. And that is why a lot of them so far have not declared their intentions. But I can tell you right now, authoritatively, that you have a lot of Southerners that are ready to, to buy in the, in the next presidential election. A lot. Even from River State alone, I can tell you that it is, of, I have a central conviction that the Minister for Transportation is interested in that part. And I can also say that yes, as well, we get the governor of River State is also interested in that topic. I can say that. So, uh, it's so, so, so if, even if I have yeah. to play the devil's advocate with the passage, now, the two with the people... Of, with the passage of time, with the passage of time, yes. I can tell you that, uh, just another two, three months, I can tell you that you have a minimum, a minimum of uh, 20, 25 persons 
from this house. Okay, very quickly, be, very quickly, before we bring Samaila Musa in, uh, I just wanted to, you know, uh, to buttress on what you said about uh, uh, people who have indicated interest. You talked about the governor of um, River State, uh, Nason Wiki. You also talked about... I said about I have a conviction, not that he's... Okay, you have a conviction. Like All right, I just wanted to be clear because you mentioned two people from the same state. That's I was wondering... He has not said to me. So, I, 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 it's my conviction. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, even if... Even not, if we, not even the minister, but... All right. Not even the Minister for Transport has said, oh, no, I'm going to confess. All right, but okay. I have a conviction. You will gain. As human beings, you can extrapolate. I was, going to, I was going to say that based on your extrapolation, I hope there will not be conflict of interest having uh, you know, two candidates from uh, the same state, and, and I hope uh, at the end of the day, their chances won't be limited. No, no, no. That definitely, definitely is going to affect the votes, because you're not going to have a block vote. But I can tell you that diverse ask people know who they will protect when it comes to All right. uh, the presidency. They know who will be there All in right. their own interest, in All their right. own image. All right, open yeah. about, I'll come back to you. Let's uh, quickly bring in um, Samaila Musa into this conversation. Samaila, uh, I hope you can hear us right now. Yeah, I can hear you, but you, I mean, you need to increase your uh, the volume of your voice now because... You know, I'm actually... All right, you know, uh, I will try as much as possible to project more than I am doing right now. We're just talking about um, the north, the south, uh, there's this particular dichotomy. And um, the uh, elder statesman, Edwin Clark, uh, wants um, the south, I know, to be given the opportunity, you know, to run or to be president uh, in 2023. He cited instances uh, specifically, he said, uh, he pointed that existing records had shown that northern Nigeria has held the nation's number one office for more than four decades, uh, both on the military and civil role. I want you to, to talk about this. You know, there is this, uh, you know, talk everywhere across um, various, um, you know, fora that um, the North should actually uh, just press pause, as it were, to allow um, the South, you know, rule. What are your thoughts, really? Uh, honestly, uh, most of your question, I think you really uh, uh, pick it up. I mean, I can't make sense of it in the sense that, you know, I keep hearing you, you skip at interval. But if I just want to guess what you're asking, what's uh, my talk about, uh, what uh, Chief Edwin Clark said about, yes, go you ahead. know. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, I think uh, that's his own opinion, right? Um, and everyone is actually. Uh, entitled to that. I mean, uh, you know, he's free to actually uh, voice his own opinion. But you see, uh, that's not a, a reality of what it is. I mean, we're trying to move away from a particular uh, trend, which is, has not really uh, taken this country anywhere. Uh, we really want to move away from this. Uh, you know, when you say, you know, of course, at the political party level, there's, there's zoning, there's micro zoning, and all of that. But uh, the style of both uh, political parties right now, or the body language right now, is if a president can actually come from anywhere. The body uh, language for, of, from our which, opinion is this: from which right? side? We want to go out to shop for. Uh, I, I don't know if you're asking a question now, but I, because I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm hearing there's some noise at the background. Just go ahead. Go ahead with your what? Go ahead okay, with your so, uh, you know, uh, our opinion right now, or what we are, our stand at that particular moment is that we want to go out all out there to shop for uh, uh, the best uh, presidential candidates for this country. Because, you see, Nigeria is actually uh, in some kind of a mess right now, and we really need someone who can actually pull this country out of the mess that is found itself right now. So, really... So uh, it's actually devoid of where the person is coming from. You know, the person can actually come from anywhere. You understand? Uh, once he is competent, he, people will vote for him. And I can tell you for a fact that the North uh, uh, disposition has actually been, because when it comes to politics, uh, in the past, uh, the North has voted for uh, credible candidates even against its own. Uh, you know, during MQ Abiola, the North voted for MQ Abiola. I guess uh, Bashar Tofa, who actually was his own, you know, and during Obasanjo also, uh, which saw that actually at work. And in 2011, uh, the North voted for for Eradua. I mean, uh, even against uh, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari. So really, 
the, the take right now is we're just going out there shopping for the best candidate that has what it takes to pull Nigeria out of this uh, doldrum, to pull Nigeria out of this mess that we found ourselves. You know, I mean, uh, these are actually not the best of times for us at this country to begin to toy with who becomes uh, the next president. Uh, it's a serious business because Nigeria must work. And if that is the slogan right now, uh, we just need to really uh, shop for the best candidate regardless of where he or, he or she is coming from. Okay, if I have to put it differently now, come 2020... Uh, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you speak louder, please? I am almost, uh, you know, screaming at the top of my lungs. Uh, okay, yeah. you know, because I'm sure the phone is not just close to where you are, so... Uh, All right, uh, what I asked... Standing from afar. Okay, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, what I asked, uh, I was trying to put what you have said um, differently, if I really got all that you have said correctly. Come 2023, are you saying that the CNG, which you represent, could actually vote in or support any candidate who is not from the northern region? Okay, if, what you're asking is if the CNG is going to vote for a candidate that's not from the north, right? Yes, my point exactly. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're actually not shutting our doors. And that's why I say we're going out there to shop for a presidential candidate that is fit for the job. So, and when we're talking about competence, I mean, it, it should not, you shouldn't shut your doors against uh, a particular region. So we're, we're, out there, uh, we're going out there to shop for the best candidate who is fit, who has what it takes, who, you know, we can actually go through his credentials. Uh, and see that, oh, this person really has done much for himself. And so if you give him uh, a Nigeria at this kind of particular time, uh, he's going to, uh, you know, actually uh, perform. So that, that, that is our resolve at the moment. So it, 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 whether, wherever you come from, whatever religion it is, whoever it is, all we're out after is uh, a candidate that actually has what it takes. And that's why we say that our earlier position has actually been, and it still is, that don't shut a particular region out of the race. Because who knows? Uh, let all of them right. come out. You know, we're going to juggle the candidate and see and, and pick the best out of them. So if you are the best, put yourself, present yourself for this election. If you feel you have what it takes, present yourself. And nobody should shut the door against you uh, based on where you come from. All right, thank if you, you Samayla. We're going to look out there and see if, uh, you know, and just pick the best for, for, for this country. All because right, thank that is the only thing, option that we have for now. All right, thank you so much, um, Samayla Musa, Director of yeah, Strategic you, Communications, yeah, um, CNG. Uh, right. Just before we yeah. uh, conclude, let's uh, get back up to Oponabo in Kotaria. I'm sure you have followed, uh, you know, the opinion so far of um, the CNG. But let's, uh, me take it, let me take it just one step further, looking at all that he said. When can we get to a point uh, where, you know, the talk would be about... Uh, who can actually manage the country better uh, and not uh, just based on ethnicity? Yeah, yeah, just just yeah, we, are, we are running out of time, so I'll quickly respond to that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. First, let me say, let me say, I agree with the tenor of the argument, but I disagree with the submission. Uh, he's talking of meritocracy. Basically, that's what he's talking about. That we need credible persons that will be there and will be able to deliver the goods. But what we are saying is, that's why opening statement I mentioned United States of America. What we are saying is, it is based on that. You have them in every region. You have them in the north, you have them in the south, in the east, you have them in the west. And since you have them in all these regions, now, the democracy is all about majoritarianism. If you go to the polls, it simply means the majority will carry the polls. And if they not, in that case, because the North will always have one of the best, the South will always have one of the best, but the East will have, but because they have the numerical strength and advantage, do whatever produce the president. And that's why we are talking about consensus. And the United States of America, the way they addressed it is the college system. Otherwise, Al Gore won, Hillary Clinton won, but they said no, in consideration of the smaller state, they had the college system. And you have to take into cognizance these peculiarities and political nuances if you want a united country. And that is why we are saying, look, it is not a matter of right. It's a matter of concession. It's a matter of consideration. And that's why we all say, I said, I said, I plead with Nigerians to allow the South 
to produce. You have the best in every region. Every region can produce the best. So beyond the best, what is the other measure are you going to use? If you want the nation to remain as one, because the tenuous legacies of this country are being threatened on daily basis. The fissures are getting wider. So how do you spend them? How do you fill that gaps, those gaps? And that is why we are saying, no, let us come together and agree. That's why even the issue of consensus was admitted in this last amendment. Because if we all agree and produce, even in the South, we're not going to say we're going to bring an idiot from the South, not at all. We're going to present our best. And not just one. From the content contestants, we're going to select the one we believe is going to be the best. So that's the argument. That's, that's why I say I agree with the tenor of his argument, but not with his submission. All right, thank you so much, um, Obunabo. Uh, that's as much as we can take uh, on this particular discourse. Obunabo in Kotaria is a uh, former special advisor to the River State Government. Thank you so much for your thought. We also had Elias Samaila Musa, Director of Strategic Communication uh, Coalition of Northern Group. Thank you so much, gentlemen. All right, in a moment, uh, we'll take a quick break now. And when we return, insecurity in Kaduna is on the front burner and Governor Air Rafa is seeking help. A detail soon. Stay with us.